Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining today's webinar, Five Ways to Boost L&D with Microsimulations. For those of you that have, may not have interacted with us in the past, my name is Matthew Shell, Market Development Manager here at Capsum, where I help all of our authors, whether they be academic or corporate, with creating their own custom microsimulations via the Capsum Inbox authoring platform. And of course, during today's webinar, we'd like to focus on how professionals such as yourselves can create your own engaging and meaningful learning tools that can be customized directly to your company or to a particular set of clients you have uh, at any given time within the platform. Now, just to give you a very brief history about us here, we at Capsum have been in the simulation industry for about 35 years now, going back to 1985. And all the way back to that time, we've been assisting companies with everything from executive education to assisting with management training, identifying high potential employees. And we performed hundreds of on-site programs. And more recently, we've even moved those virtually at this time. Um, however, what we wanted to do with the CAPS and Minbox platform is we wanted to give companies and professionals the tools necessary to create their own custom solutions that can directly and assess and measure the key skills relative directly to their company or to their industry. And honestly, when I was talking with Brendan about doing this webinar, we thought, really, what better way could we demonstrate the capabilities of the platform, along with the use cases we'll focus on, than to use the platform itself, which is actually what you're seeing on screen. This is a custom kind of presentation we created for directly for today's webinar. And in fact, if you think about it, it kind of demonstrates a sixth use case where you could essentially use this as a presentation tool. And now, of course, you're going to see a lot of emails during this experience. By no means are we going to be reading off the screen or do you have to look at everything. We're going to actually provide you a link to go to this experience directly after the presentation. That way you can experience yourself and take a more granular look if you'd like. But with that, I'd like to go and introduce my colleague in Capsum's direct, uh, Director of Product Design Development, Brennan Langen. Brennan? Hey, thank you, Matt. It's uh, it's great to be able to share the space with you. Um, happy to share what we've been building at Capsum of late. Um, what you're seeing, as Matt mentioned, is our version of a micro simulation. Uh, we call this Capsum Inbox. Uh, and we're going to share a ton of detail about what Capsum Inbox is. Uh, but this format that Matt mentioned is actually going to offer us a chance to show you how Capsum Inbox can be used in your organization. And today we're talking use cases. Uh, so a, a few months back in a, an all company uh, or all hands company meeting, uh, we used a variation of, of this process, uh, which you're seeing. Uh, we were presenting product strategy updates to all employees all through Capsum Inbox. Uh, and, and on that day, we almost treated this as a, a Hollywood table read. Uh, we, we used different characters that we called upon. We read the emails verbatim and allowed people to answer in, in that series of events. Uh, today, we're not going to go that far. Uh, we are going to actually use the Inbox platform to show you how this can be used, though. So let's start with an agenda. And uh, today, we're going to discuss five different use cases, how to improve the hiring and selection process, how to certify individuals in a contextualized environment, how to analyze the effectiveness of established L&D programs, how to identify employee skill gaps, both on the soft behavioral side and technical side, and how to evaluate and train high potential employees. Uh, so on that note, I'm gonna kick it back over to Matt. And before we jump in all the way across the board, Matt, can you take us through what this looks like to a participant or an administrator? Absolutely, Brendan, be happy to do so. So let's start off with just doing a quick summary of what exactly is the Capsum Inbox experience? What does it entail? We'll dive a little bit further into that, like the onboarding process and talk a little bit about the user interface that we're looking at right now. And then we'll go right into those use cases. But to start, what exactly is Capsum Inbox? Well, what Capsum Inbox is, is it's a simulated email experience where essentially what we're doing is we're putting participants in a day in the life of a manager at either a fictional company or set directly within your own company. And we wanna see how would they respond to different day-to-day -day tasks, as well as the problems and even crises that they may encounter in that role. And honestly, a great way to kind of uh, contextualize what Inbox is, is think of it like a digital choose your own adventure, where essentially based on the decisions that employees, participants, or your clients make, they're gonna be able to see the consequences of those actions in real time which may bring them to a variety of different outcomes. However, at the same time, we're able to really assess and measure 
key skills, whether they be soft skills like problem solving or leadership, or even more technical skills, maybe related to a particular job function, for instance. Now, what's great about Caps Inbox is it's entirely web-based, individualized, and very much a self-directed experience. Honestly, implementation is as easy as just giving a hyperlink to your employees to either one of our ready-to-use versions or a custom version that you create yourself on our authoring platform. And once they log into that experience, again, a very self-directed process starts that brings them through an experience overview, which is essentially an onboarding process, and we'll detail that in just a second. Once they complete that onboarding process, they go into the simulation itself, which you're seeing actually on screen here during today's presentation, where they respond to those emails and instant messages. And then after completing the inbox experience, we give them a very detailed and individualized feedback report where we can talk about things like skill awareness as well as uh, identifying skill gaps. And after that, we also give the optional tools to create an individual development plan where they can actively set quantitative goals to and action items to improve those skills. So now that we've done a quick overview of CAPS Inbox, let's take a brief look at what the onboarding process looks like before we get into some use cases. So really quick here, what does a participant experience during the CAPS Inbox onboarding process? So they've just logged in, they're ready to get started. Well, the first thing that we do is we provide them with a self-assessment, where what we do is we ask them the question, relative to your peers, where do you place yourself on the following skills on a scale of one to 100, basically a percentile? And what we're looking at here is a sample from our general management version, one of our most widely used versions on the corporate side, where we look at uh, assessing and measuring organizing, leadership, problem solving, communicating, and initiative capabilities. So in this case, the individual saying that they're about average when it comes to leading and organizing. They think they're particularly proficient when it comes to communicating and initiating uh, solutions. However, they could have a little bit more work, they think, when it comes to problem solving in this regard. And what's great about this is it allows us to catalog the individual's perceived skill area, uh, skill competencies, and then we can actually compare their results with the empirical assessment in the inbox experience. Now, after they've completed the self-assessment, the next thing we do for them in the onboarding process is essentially set the scene, where we describe to them the fictional scenario. What is the company that they're working for? What is the industry that they're set in? What are some you know, common factors that they're going to encounter throughout the course of the simulation? Additionally, we give them information on their fictional role in the company. So we talk about what's their title, how long have they been with the company, who reports to them, who do they report to, and any relevant roles and responsibilities that are going to be uh, popping up during the experience. And you see here, we even do a fun little fictional business card to kind of up the fidelity a little bit. And in some of our versions, we provide additional documentation on the company history, uh, products and services, or even potential clients to kind of, again, uh, set the scene before they go into the experience. Now, the very final component of the onboarding is going to be actually where they start the inbox experience, where we provided them just some last minute information about where they're at at that point in the day before they go into the experience. And then upon uh, uh, clicking that green start inbox button, that will start the timed experience and they will have completed the onboarding. So now that we've kind of given an overview of what Inbox is, as well as the onboarding process, let's get to the use cases. And the first use case we're going to focus on today, as they populate here on the left with some timing delays that we've put into today's experience, we're going to talk about selection first. And this is actually a great example of how we at Capsum utilize our own solutions to our success as well. We want to live by our products just as our clients do. And for this first example in terms of selection, I actually recently just created a different version of Inbox as a role preview of a learning experience coordinator position that we were recently hiring for here at Capsum. So what I was able to do with this is I wanted to create a sample experience where if people were interested in applying for this position, they could essentially go into this experiential tool and have a essentially a first person view of exactly the types of scenarios, the exact roles and responsibilities that they were going to encounter in this role. And the great part about this was, is I actually based the experience on a lot of the real life emails that are common in my day-to-day -day operations. I simply de-identified them, removed any real names or sensitive data and used them as templates essentially. And in fact, I was able to create roughly a 20 email experience in a little under four hours. So you see there's a fairly quick turnaround when it comes to the content creation aspect on Inbox. 
Now, in terms of the skills that I wanted to assess in this selective uh, kind of filter, if you will, I wanted to see how individuals would do when it comes to internal communication, such as interacting with our marketing director. I wanted to see how they would approach market research to see where what areas could Caption Inbox help different industries. I wanted to look at client-focused communication because they would, of course, be helping our authors with navigating the development process. And of course, project management as well, helping a variety of authors and, and being on task for different projects all at the same time. So what I'd like to do now is actually show you examples directly from that experience where we have a fictional inter, uh, kind of conversation between the potential applicant with Capsum's fictional director of marketing. Let's take a look. So what we, what we have here is our fictional director of marketing, Ethan Morrison who's reaching out to the, new, the potential new hire and saying, hey, you know, it's great to meet you. I'm the director of marketing. Here's a little bit about what I do in my role and how we'll be working together. But the first question that the marketing director asks is, you know, we're, we always like to do some quick research on where our micro simulations can really help out either participants in the corporate workspace or with students prepare, preparing to enter the workplace. Would you be able to assist? So I made some uh, pretty uh, straightforward responses. Absolutely, let's get researching, a really proactive and engaged response, along with sure and I guess so. You know, Just trying to see, you know, can you gauge the enthusiasm of somebody going through this experience? So absolutely, let's get researching. From there, Ethan reaches out and says, okay, well, let's start by doing some basic research. Could you take a look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics website and then search for career clusters? I'd really like to find out that out of all the different career clusters that include areas such as finance, marketing, health science, where do you see that the most job openings and job growth is going to be projected between 2012 and 2022? So a practical example for the candidate to have an idea of what kind of things will they be researching in this role. And by doing a little bit of research, they'll go ahead and find out that hospitality and tourism is the, most, uh, is the one with the most growth in the near future. So we'll respond to that. But then after the fact, you know, it's one thing if they're responding to options we give them. I want something a little bit more uh, qualitative in this response. I want something a little bit more personable. So what we're able to do in Inbox is I, a, a fictional version of myself reaches out to them after the fact and says, thank you for helping out, Ethan, with that research. I would love to get your personal approach to market research. Could you describe to me what methods you would use to research different industries that, we may, that may be able to benefit from experiential learning tools? And what we're able to do is provide an open text box that you see down here with full editing capabilities where they could essentially write the email just as if they were in the workplace. So what I'll do is I'll just put in a quick yes, I'd be happy to do so, and I'll click respond. So a quick sample of our first use case there on the selection process, show you how does that look from the administrative portal? Well, I'm easily able to see cohort level information in terms of their overall score by percentile, as well as how they performed on the different aspects I wanted to assess. And then I could come down here and look at the individual performance of each candidate that went through the experience. Now, when it comes to written responses, I'm able to click on each of those individuals and I can go ahead and read their individual responses and put in a, a grade, if you will, or just an assessment component where I wanted to kind of gauge how well they, their response was, at least from my perspective. And now, of course, this screening tool, this part, using Inbox as part of the selection process, is a component of that process, not the determining factor. Of course, no one knows a better uh, way to select the right employee than you do, but this could be a good way to essentially serve as a filter and allow you to get, collect some interesting information, such as how would the, the candidates handle specific situations, assess the key skills and competencies related to the role, be able to analyze the written responses to get a little bit of insight into their decision-making process, Ensure they're a good fit even prior to reaching out for a call or even before they submit their application. And you got to think of the benefit too for the participant. They have an opportunity to see just how well they'd be a fit for the role. And this benefited my experience as well because I actually had just as many people that did not submit an application as they did because they were able to get that preview right at the onset there. And what's great about this is that if you wanted to utilize this for your company, you could create it for one role and then simply clone it and make the necessary changes to make it relevant for additional role previews in the future. So with that, that comes to the conclusion of our first use case. Now what I'm gonna do is hand it over to Brendan who's gonna talk about our next use case focused on the certification aspect. Brendan? Thanks, Matt. Uh, this use case around how to hire the right person I think will resonate with anyone who's looking to bring on the right employee. 
Uh, so I, I love that that example is the one that we lead with. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Uh, so on our second use case, we're really going to focus on the idea of certification. Um, how can we use a tool like Capsim Inbox to raise the fidelity of a certification experience? And you know, this is a use case we're, we're quite excited about because certification includes measuring and assessing how well a participant has retained knowledge across a variety of scenarios. The email inbox that they can go through, well, it's similar to what they experience on a day-to-day. -day. Uh, it resembles the same environment that they might be living in. So in a few examples of how inbox might be usable as a certification tool, uh, I can think of one that's very prominent. Uh, when completing an HR training module, uh, in many of your companies, you have required certification. Uh, this can be continuing education. This can be um, you know, training on different measures about how to operate in a pandemic uh, and, and so on. Um, to provide an end of course experience uh, with someone going through a Capsum inbox is one way that we've actually seen this used already. Uh, and then outside of that, really we can think about the opportunity to use uh, Capsum inbox to measure the and, and assess performance of software or web platforms. Uh, so in this case, uh, we actually have a Fortune 500 company that we can call on for a specific example. They reached out uh, a handful of months ago to get a, pro uh, a product started around their tool. And so let's actually jump into that specific case. And what you're going to see here is actually one of our uh, one of our fictional characters. As Matt said earlier, we de-identify you know the people we're working with. Um, but in this case, we're getting an email from Raymond Henderson. He's a product manager at M&B Market Central, and in their case, they had a data analytics platform uh, that provides really market data to students in universities uh, that help them interpret data and use this for research purposes. Um, what's really interesting about this situation is most of the way that they used uh, a certification process in the past was based all around quizzes. And I, I don't know about all of you, but standard quiz call and response is not necessarily my jam. Uh, it doesn't really excite me. And the studies back this up. Experiential learning is a way to embed information and let it live on in your participant much, in a much better way. Uh, so in Raymond's case, we worked in uh, a simulation-based method. Uh, and let's actually take a look at what happened when we set up a call. So here's one of our data analysts and a sample question that might have appeared in this certification. Uh, and I'm going to read this one word for word so you guys can see this firsthand. Uh, Carla Deals, the senior VP of U.S. Sales, has asked that I look into the demographics across the country to see if there's any influence over sales. What kind of graphic do you think would be best to share? So this was modified from the original exam question, which is listed below. Based on the choices below, what is the most effective data visualization to assess if demographics have any influence over sales? Uh, so at the root, this is a data visualization question. We are using our knowledge of tools and our knowledge of uh, visualization to answer this question. And Matt, I'm gonna put you on the spot. What do you think the best answer is here? Well, I'm gonna say, let's go with the median age in the US by municipality. You know, we're also looking at households, so. Cool, all right, so let's take a look at this and one great thing about Capsum Inbox is you can bake in attachments, as you've already seen in some of these methods. And in this case, you respond to an email, you get what you're looking for. This is a visualization of the US median household income. And what the student can take away from here is a way to actually measure, did I nail this? Did I use the right technique to actually progress? Uh, and in our uh, inbox fashion, you have emails coming back and forth. So at this point, I can continue my analysis, but this provides the, uh, the quiz makers, the certifiers, a way to assess, have students grasp this info and can they then apply it in a situation that might exist in the real world? Um, and in this case, it's really just translating a simple exam that you might already have for some of your certification processes and converting it into a realistic scenario. You're set into that role of a business analyst. It's a day in the life. And it's not memorizing responses, it's actually applying it in an experience. So since then, we've actually built out several mini modules uh, on, uh, on different topic areas. Uh, 
And this almost plays out like chapters in a book uh, where a student will go through a chapter, they'll have you know, this entire experience is, is learning with questions that they have to respond to. And if they do pass a, a certain threshold, they get a certificate of approval. Um, they can put this in their LinkedIn profile. They can advertise to hiring partners that they are capable of using this platform. Uh, now for the company, they can get access to the individual performance, the cohort. Uh, typically this would be a classroom or uh, in the setting of a corporate university, you know, your group that you put through this. Uh, but you can also compare this uh, across job functions and across institutions and countries, and even on a global level. Um, so a few other quick hits on ways that certification could be used. Uh, safety compliance training. Uh, we've seen this in both the industrial and manufacturing industry. Uh, an in-house tutorial for how to use resources like your company intranet. Uh, and also a practical example of how you communicate information to the right stakeholders. We see this a lot. And as Matt said, we always try to bake in our own experiences into inboxes. So that is our second use case. Let's move ahead and actually take a look at how we can use the Inbox Offering Platform to evaluate what you're currently doing. Uh, we call this kind of your, your program inferences. And this is actually one of the most effective implementations of the Offering Platform. Uh, can you shed light on the effectiveness of your program? Um, earlier on, I mentioned that we can assess and measure both the soft behavioral skills as well as those technical areas. And this is all done in this experiential learning environment. You go through a day in the life of someone going through this moment. Um, so in this case, let's take a look at a program that really was focusing on soft skill development for their supervisors. Uh, and we have a, a version of Capsum Inbox uh, that's off the shelf. It's called Capsum Inbox People Management. Uh, and once all the participants complete this exercise, we're going to actually take a look at the entire cohort results, see if we can identify any gaps in their understanding. And I just love the title of this, a cohort conundrum. Uh, so people management, as I mentioned, uh, is one of our off the shelf caps and inboxes. And in this version, you assume the role of uh, an associate principal at a management consulting firm. So you've got a lot of projects both inside and outside the company. Uh, and you lead a team of 18 senior and junior associates. So you've got kind of two different tiers of employees that you really have to work, work with. Uh, there's issues that pop up, there's multiple projects going on, and we measure five key skills across this version. Organizing, leading, problem solving, communication, and initiating. And let's actually pull up these cohort level results and see how things went. Uh, and, and as you can see, there's, there's a, a variety of scores we performed as a cohort in the 66th percentile. As Matt mentioned earlier, uh, Capsum Inbox is great for comparing performance across a wider population. Um, at the end of the day, we, we measure against other people who use these tools. We want to see how we rank and how we stack up. This cohort was above average. They were in the 66th percentile. Uh, some things they did really well, initiating, it looks like, in the 79th percentile. Uh, leading in the 72nd percentile, but we see that top score, organizing. Uh, and, and really what we were able to identify here is this group might need some more L&D training around effectively organizing tasks. And as a result, you might be able to take this info to recommend more exercises and more training to up that skill level. So in this case, Capsum Inbox really acts as a way to identify where skill gaps are in your organization. Um, I, I know if you're anything like us, you have some strengths in your organization and you also have some weaknesses. We have to be honest with ourselves in those cases. And something like Capsum Inbox can help us identify where we need to improve. So let's actually hand it back to Matt and we're going to move on to the fourth use case. Absolutely. Thank you again, Brendan. And now that Brennan's talked a little bit about how we can display cohort level data to make inferences about L&D programs, let's take it down a notch and look at it a bit more from the individual level to demonstrate how we can directly identify employee skill gaps. And more importantly, once they get that feedback, how we can actively help them improve their skills going forward. So as we went through the onboarding process, you're kind of seeing the micro simulation experience, you know, in the same way a participant would. Once they've responded, to all the emails on that given experience, they'll be prompted to exit the inbox. So they have a clear indication that they've completed the exercise. 
And immediately, once they complete that experience, we're gonna give them that individualized feedback report. And what you're seeing here in this attachment is just a quick screenshot of the main components of that feedback report. And we give the individual information on four key areas standard with any inbox that we have ready to use, as well as any inbox that you personally create. So it's kind of nice, we kind of have a lot of the infusion and the science of learning directly into any solution that's created on this platform. So basically, what are we showing them in terms of results? Well, the first thing that we do is we show the individual their overall performance by percentile against the general populace that's gone through that given version. So take, for instance, our general management, where we've had thousands upon thousands of users go through it. Well, any user that goes through it today is going to see how they stack up against that entire populace, whether they be utilized in academia or on the corporate side. And what's great is that they take it later in the future, they're going to get that update and they're going to see how they've improved uh, since then, basically. The next thing that we show them is a developmental index. And what we're focusing on here is how proficient were they in their responses to emails and the experience? You know, were they picking the most effective one if it's more of a soft skill related question or if it's more of a yes or no when it comes to a technical question? And then also looking at the consistency of that proficiency during the exercise. Now, on the latter half of the sheet there, you'll see, and perhaps more importantly, is this is where we start really comparing those self-assessment numbers that I showed you at the beginning with their perceived skill uh, level with their performance, the empirical scoring that's baked into the inbox micro simulation. So right at the top of the page, you'll see that we give them a self-awareness gauge on a scale of one to six. And basically, if you have a lower score, that could indicate either that you're overestimating or underestimating your capabilities. Where if you're achieving a higher score, say four, five, or six, it may let you know that your expectations, your perceived skills are a little bit more closer to reality in the practical application part of the microsim. Now below that, this is where we actually visualize the skill gap. So uh, on these lines, we, we actually plot out where their self-assessment was versus their inbox assessment. And this does two, two key things for us. The first thing is, it'll indicate where their strengths are at, but perhaps more importantly, it's gonna help them identify which areas are in most need for improvement. Now, this of course is all accessible via the administrative portal as well. And while all this feedback is great, how exactly do participants and administrators put this feedback to use to actively improve their skills? Well, what this does is it brings us to an optional component of our inboxes, uh, fairly more uh, required on the corporate side, I would say. But let's talk a little bit about individual development plans. So after an individual gets to review their results, the next thing that they have the opportunity to do is build this IDP, if you will. And I can talk to you a little bit about that process here with this visualization. So first things first, we of course show them their skill scores and the level of developmental need, where if you have a lower skill, obviously the developmental need will be higher and vice versa. And what individuals and participants are able to do is click that improve button to start the creation of an individual development plan for that given skill. And they could do it for each of the skills if they would like. So take for instance, our example of organizing. The very first thing that they'll see is a series of developmental tactics provided by the author of that given version of Inbox. And you'd be able to add this as well with any custom solution you create. And basically what this developmental tactics page entails is the best practices, suggested resources, or even just general tips and tricks on how you can improve this skill moving forward. And really this is kind of to give that initial, you know, recommendation to the uh, participant on how to improve them when it comes to their personal situation, because the next part they go through is a bit of self-reflection. Why, for instance, is organizing particularly relevant to their particular career path or their job that they're at right now? And then describe a few ways that it's gonna be relevant you know, throughout life in general too. After that is where they actually set a quantitative goal statement. So they may say, for instance, I would like to improve my organizing capabilities by 10% by the end of 2020, December 31st of 2020. And here's exactly how I'm going to do that. Okay, well, they've got their goal statement, but how are they exactly gonna do that? Well, that's where they create the individual steps in their plan. So for each step in their plan, they'll detail the exact action they're going to take, what day they're going to complete it, and what additional resources are necessary for them to complete that? Is it having additional help from other people? Is it money? Is it time? Whatever it may be. And this is something they can edit and modify over time 
But on the corporate side, honestly, we see a lot of the time where they'll either work with an HR professional or even with a consultant, for instance, to kind of re, uh, you know, essentially make some revisions to the IDP to provide additional guidance. And what is the end result? What does the output of an IDP look like? Well, I can actually show you an example of that. Let me go ahead and pull it up in a separate window here and make it a little easier to view. I've actually got a print off here that I did yesterday where it talks about, again, the process to create an individual development plan. I'll have my quantitative goal statement here as well with my steps. And then after that, I'll have access to the developmental tactics. So let me hop out of this back into the experience, kind of show you what that looks like. Now, again, we've given them feedback. We've given them, they've taken the time to make an individual development plan to improve these skills. Well, how do we exactly assess how effective their efforts were during that time? Which brings us to one of our uh, most common uses of the Capsum Inbox platform, either again, ready to use or custom simulations, would be in pre-test, post-test applications. A very effective way to do this, where essentially you have that participant go through the same version of Inbox with an adequate time uh, uh, you know, gap in between, at least a couple days, we suggest you know, a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks, but you could extend this beyond months or even the better part of a year and have them go through that same experience. And what's great about this is that we are actually able to provide empirical longitudinal data on the development of that participant's skills between the first pre-test and the second post-test application. So to demonstrate this, let's take a look at some sample results from the general management and people management versions that Brendan and I have been referring to today. Because since they assess the same five skills, we're able to directly compare those results. Of course, people management provides some additional competency scores around supervisory aspects too, but let's take a look at what those results look like. So what you're seeing here is how pre and post test results would be seen from the participant portal. So they're able to see, for instance, that they scored in the 51st percentile when they went through general management the first time, let's say it was January of 2020. And let's say they just wrapped up going through people management here on November 12th of 2020, where they scored much higher in the 74th percentile. Great uh, kind of top level score, the difference there. However, let's look at the individual skill scores where we're actually able to show the net change in the skill, whether it be positive or negative, between the first and second implementation. So for example, we're seeing some marginal increases for organizing, leadership, so a bit larger ones for communication and initiating, but it really looks like the individual took it to heart, say they had an IDP built on problem solving, they were incredibly effective with improving the skill from there. And what's great about this is there's a couple of different ways that we can provide examples for pre and post test applications. Say for instance, at the beginning and the end of a more elongated training program, maybe something that's taking place over a couple of weeks, or perhaps you want to have a pre and post test application where you administer it annually to as a part of a recurring training program or as a part of a performance review. Or perhaps even going back to the onboarding example or maybe an HR training module, maybe you want to do it right before they complete it and right after it to see how well they've ascertained that knowledge based on the training they just went through. And what's this is a great segue to is that based on this information, based on the individual score results that we can provide to you, it leads us directly into the fifth and final use case that we'll describe today that Brendan will take us through around identifying high potential employees. So let's go ahead and take a look. Brendan, take it away. Yeah, that's that's really a great way to use Captain Inbox. Uh, who do you want to put your time and energy, your resources into to growing into a future leader in your company? Uh, and you know, this requires us to take a little uh, walk down history lane. Um, Capsum was founded in the mid 1980s, uh, 1985 to be specific. And since then, we really worked with many companies that were uh, trying to up their level of, of quality on the performance of employees. So this started at, you know, base levels for managers up to C-suite level training. And over that time, we've worked with tons of companies that have been able to put their employees through our simulations and train their people. Uh, this afforded opportunities for career advancement. Uh, this afforded opportunities for the company to grow and to make better strategic decisions as a whole. And over the last three years or so, uh, we've been applying those insights to Capsum Inbox. Uh, we launched Capsum Inbox in the summer of 2017. Uh, with our first version, Captain Inbox General Management. Matt has showed a little bit of that uh, over the last few uh, few screens. Now, 
in the example of general management and uh, its follow-up, people management, we're able to take a look at the wider audience that has actually gone through these versions. And so let's actually take a look at you know, performance across the highest of high level performers in Capsum Inbox. And here we're taking a look at people who have scored in the top three percentile. Uh, so these are people that uh, have been identified in corporate environments as high potentials. Uh, and why that's important is because the data actually backs up that they can be high potential employees in the workforce. Um, we built Capsum Inbox with a few things in mind, uh, but at the root of it was strong data. Um, and we've actually completed some research around this. So let's actually take a look at that data map and show how high performance in Capsum Inbox correlates to on-the-job performance. So as I've said, we base our information on the research that we actually get. And the initial authors of Capsum Inbox General Management, uh, Dr. Eric Deerdorf and Dr. Bob, uh, Bob Rubin, uh, are IO psychologists at DePaul University. They use this tool to actually measure the performance of people that were going through grad school and were also working in their professional careers. Um, and I, I don't want to uh, you know, mess up Dr. Deerdorf's words in this case. Uh, so I'm gonna read this straight away from him. But the, the attached technical synopsis measured the performance of, of over 400 employees who took caps in inbox. And then we compared their results to supervisor ratings of their performance. So they, they went through a, a 360 in their job. And in Dr. D's words, uh, Capsum Inbox overall scores were positively correlated supervisory ratings of overall job performance effectiveness. Uh, this had an R of 0.43. Uh, by way of comparison, a meta-analysis of assessment center studies found the average correlation between assessment center scores and job performance to be 0.37. Um, so it, that can be a little bit complicated to some. Uh, I'll sum it up for you. In my words, the results were great. Uh, Capsum Inbox is predictive of on-the-job success. Um, in fact, it's actually only second out of any assessment measure to uh, a real-life work sample. So if you bring in an employee and you want to see how effective they will be in the job, you put them through a work sample if you've designed one uh, appropriately. Um, Alternatively, you can put them through a Capsum inbox that simulates a day in the life of that role. And so if, if we open up this technical synopsis, there's so much more detail here about some of the ways that we actually built the tool. Um, we kind of call this our internal validity report. And, and in it, it's a, an 11 page document of an assessment of how this is built, the skills assessed, what decisions the uh, participants have to make, some examples. Um, before it really touches on some of the procedures of how this assessment was developed. And as I said, Dr. Deerdorf and Dr. Rubin put the time in to craft this technical synopsis so that we could assess the reliability and validity both across the entire tool and the individual criteria that are covered. Uh, at the end of the document, we have all of the kind of resources and references to other work in this field. And this is something that is available to you at, at any point. We want to make our knowledge public. We want you to be able to use Capsum Inbox to research. And I, I just encourage you to take a look at this technical synopsis. Uh, we've had absolutely great feedback on how Inbox can be used across a number of different ways. And this shows how general management, people management, and ethical decision making, another follow up inbox, can be used to actually measure performance. Uh, and the assessment, simply put, wow. Uh, this is a valid tool, and I encourage you all to check out what we have here with the technical synopsis. Matt, I'll kick it back over to you. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Brendan. Well, now that we've demonstrated, you know, kind of five strong use cases for how to utilize both ready-to-use Capsum Inbox versions as well as the authoring platform to create your own versions, now what I can do is I can share a little bit of information with you about how do the different publishing models as well as pricing information for the ready-to-use models work on our end. So let's start first with, say, you just want to try one of the ready-to-use versions first to see if this is a good fit for your company before you take the leap of trying to create your own version. We totally understand that. So what we're able to do is we, of course, want to keep it cost-effective because it is more an abridged experience. We're offering access to any of the versions of Inbox we have currently available, which I'll show in just a second, for $30 per participant for a given version. 
And essentially what this will do is it'll allow you, your participants to go through the entire micro simulation experience once to essentially give you a snapshot in time of their development at that point. Now, going back to our discussion around pre-test and post-test, we do offer this for $45 per, per participant to go through the same version twice. We're essentially, we're offering that second use for half off. And what this will do is allow you as administrators, as well as the participant, to again, collect as well as, see, of course, see that empirical longitudinal data between that first and second implementation. Now, what kind of versions of Inbox do we have currently av available? We have a variety. Uh, we actually have a couple of our more soft skill focused versions that we've uh, referred to throughout this call, general and people management, ethical decision making. Our time management version was actually just highlighted in Harvard Business Review, if you'd like to try that one. And we're working on one for our academic uh, clients as well around student success to increase student retention at universities. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a variety of the different quantitative versions we've created. They do have uh, aspects of soft skills in them, but as you can imagine, they're much more topical in focus. And if just to briefly share some insight on what we hear from our corporate users, crisis management, cultural awareness, as well as managerial accounting have been three of the more uh, predominantly used ones in recent days, along with human resources uh, up there within the top four as well. And if you would like access to any of these, we'd be more than happy to give you a demo account. That way you could see it yourself as well to any of your colleagues to see if it's the right fit for you. Now, the second thing I can describe would be the different publishing models should you want to create your own custom solution. So one thing I do want to state is that if you want access to the Captain Inbox authoring platform right now, you can sign up for an account and have free access to all of its functionality. There are no developmental fees whatsoever for you to create your own version of Inbox if you're the one creating all the content. Now, if you'd like to uh, work with us where we create the solution for you, we can handle that on a case-by-case -case basis, of course. But if you're working with a team of instructional designers or learning and development specialists and you're creating the content, of course, the intellectual property is yours. And you're going to be able to create that solution and actually monetize it if you'd like or use it internally. And the way that that works under our private usage model is that if you wanted to just use it internally, we could provide you with a bulk amount of licenses to use your solution. All we at Capsum assess after it's completed is a $5 per end user fee. So essentially, we, we give you a bulk license, you use those, and you can audit us at any time to use it for your own internal purposes. Or if you have a solution that you would like to sell directly to your clients or to other types of end users, you can actually monetize it and set whatever price you'd like for it. And you would actually retain any additional revenue over that $5 end user fee that we at Capsum assess for hosting it on our platform. And you know, say that over time you've created this, you know, private solution, you've been using it a lot with your clients and everything, and you're just like, you know, I really think that this could see benefit, you know, worldwide. I think other people could benefit from this, other companies outside of my own. At that point, if you'd like, you can work directly with us at Capsum, where we bring it to a public usage model, where it is actively shared, promoted, and sold by us here at Capsum to a much wider audience, being all of our current clientele. Now, the way that it would work, is that this would actually be hosted on our website and you'd have, they'd be able for purchase through our shopping cart. And really the main components about making the jump from private to public usage is of course we have a quality assurance process. We actually take it through a subject matter expert review with our network of reviewers and we do some additional piloting. And really the more data that you come with uh, with a private version, if you've tested this with quite a few individuals, that can certainly expedite the process. At the public usage model, we do at that point want to see at least a minimum price of $10 per participant. And what's great about it is we actually provide a revenue share to you. 70% uh, retained by Capsum, 30% to the author. And one thing I do want to clarify is that the public usage model as well as the private usage model are mutually inclusive. And what I mean by that is that you could be working with your own direct clients and making the margin above that $5 end user fee for sales that you directly bring in while at the same time receiving that revenue share from us here at Capsum. And if you'd like to take a look to, to explore this further, we actually do have a little uh, document here that details both of these private and public models, and we'd be happy to discuss that with you as well. But now that we've kind of taken you through the different use cases, the publishing and pricing info, this does bring us to the conclusion of today's presentation. So what I would just like to say is I'd really like to thank you all for your time for participating in today's webinar. We, hopefully, uh, we hope that it's been beneficial to you and that perhaps this tool can help you and your company or your clients. And we have a few just bits of information here to share with you. 
If you'd like to create your own free account to access the Capstone Inbox authoring platform, we've got a hyperlink here. We have our Capstone Inbox version summary PDF, which I'll show you in just a second, but basically this will kind of take you through all of the different versions of Inbox we currently have available, a little bit about their scenarios as well as the skills assessed. Again, we can provide access to any of those. But say you just like to discuss more about Caps Minbox, how it can directly help your business, or maybe you as a consultant, for instance, have an idea of creating your own solution, Brendan and I would be more than happy to discuss this with you. So I've got our contact information here. Please feel free to reach out to us. And along the same time that we send the recording of this presentation and the link to today's experience, we'll include this information as well if you'd like to reach out. So with that, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our chat to see if we had any questions. I'll take a brief look here, and then we'll see if we can respond to some of those. I'm currently seeing we have, let's see, three questions, with the first one being, uh, Brendan, this might be a good one for you to field. How long does it take to create an inbox experience? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's probably the most commonly asked question that, that we hear. Um, the... Short answer is it depends. The kind of uh, the answer that you will like to hear is that you can create an inbox in as little as a week, going from concept to testing all the way to release. Uh, and I'll I'll tell you about an example of that before going into the the, the longer time scale. Um, most versions of Capsum Inbox uh, last anywhere between 20 and 60 minutes. Um, so you can almost imagine it as kind of a, a one sitting experience. Um, for those inboxes on the shorter side, uh, typically we see uh, a, a 20 minute inbox have something around 15 to 20 emails, um, could even have fewer than that. Uh, and, and really what that requires is kind of using our public facing authoring platform to input your information. Um, and there are some ways to make this a really quick experience across the board. Uh, one of the ways that both Matt and I have done it when we've created our own versions uh, has been to kind of take existing emails, de-identify them, and use that content to create a situation that a participant has to answer. Um, so uh, Matt, I mean, on, on your side with the learning experience coordinator, how long did it take you to, to craft that inbox? I would say I was able to craft that in just under, right around four hours, I would say. In the case of the, the product manager inbox that I, Created, it's about a 15 to 20 minute experience. That took all of one day. Uh, it took a few hours to kind of sort through and, and model out what I was looking for, to prioritize kind of the, the core skills that we're looking at. Uh, but also, Matt and I are both pretty trained on this tool. But that said, it's easy to get up the learning curve. I, I don't expect anyone's going to go into the Capsum Inbox authoring platform and have a struggle knowing what's, what's going on. Um, so on the low end, you can go completely from concept all the way to publishing within a week. Uh, if, if you're extremely ambitious and you're working alongside of us, it can be as short as a day. Uh, in some longer, more uh, kind of research-driven inboxes that we've seen, those take anywhere up to a month or two. Uh, Matt, would you add anything to those types of inboxes? No, if, if anything, I would just like to add that I think a, a really critical point to highlight is that, you know, we understand that this is a new tool. Uh, we do try to make it as intuitive as possible. But the great part about it is if at any point you need any support, you know, technical assistance, you know, best practices, for instance, Brendan and I, as well as our team, uh, is going to be right there to help you every single step of the way. In fact, just to kind of give you an idea, we've worked with well over two or three dozen authors just within the past year alone to create different versions of Inbox. So happy to help out in any way that we can. And we have one follow-up question to this one specifically. How long did it take uh, you, Matt, to write the inbox for today's presentation? And not including the the attachments that were included. Actually, not not too not too much longer. I would say that that would just a little bit longer. I would say probably five hours or so over the course of two days. Very easy to, to go about, though. Yeah, and uh, in, in all honesty, I probably spent a half hour in here, um, you know, tweaking a few things here and there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, within the span of one total day, this is a, an output that you can use uh, in your own environment. 100%. Okay, let's take a look and see what other questions we have. Um, ah, we've got, uh, what is the review process for an inbox? So yeah, I can expand upon that a little bit. So uh, this is something that, again, would be under the purview of like what we can pr provide in terms of best practices. Because typically what we do, let's take you know, some of our more quantitative versions of Inbox authored by a lot of people in academia. 
Well, typically what we want to do is have a two, fast, uh, two different approaches. We want to go about with subject matter expert reviews where we have a bare minimum of three industry experts, professors, you know, and the leaders in their field going through this, where they can provide some really good qualitative information around the relevance as well as the validity of the assessment itself. So that's a big key focus we have there. I would say on the other side of the review process, whether it be students as participants or uh, employees as participants or colleagues, for instance, is we definitely want to do some pilots with these for two main reasons. One of the main reasons is, as you saw throughout our presentation, is that we rely on percentile data. So by having a couple of initial pilots, this helps us build that initial sample group to, again, increase the relevance and validity of the assessment. And then secondly, it also gives us a chance to get feedback on the experience from participants. So what we do is, you know, just make simple survey monkey style links with Likert scale questions on everything from well, how was your overall experience to how difficult was it? Was it relevant to the role, for instance, and improvements that could be made from there? And of course, we share all that information directly with the authors. That way they can make the improvements necessary before they want to go ahead and publish their version. And there's a lot of more finer details we could go into that, but I would say, again, the main two aspects would be the subject matter expert review by industry experts, as well as participant piloting prior to publishing. So. Yeah, and there's there's really then the uh, the, the ongoing iteration uh, on, on any version. Um, you know, at Capson, we use a very iterative software development approach. Uh, we, we put things out, we get feedback on them, we, we update and repeat in, in a loop. Um, we always encourage our authors to do the same. So for that length, we provide the data on an individual, you know, email by email uh, level um, to see, well, are there certain, you know, questions that you're asking or certain situations you're putting your participants into that are easier or too easy that you might want to raise the difficulty level or on the flip side are, are too challenging for them at this level. So there's a lot of information that you can, uh, you can receive from us to continue to iterate on your inbox version. Excellent. And let's see, I think we have we have one more question here to respond to. Uh, Brendan, I'll go ahead and let you lead with this one. Uh, where do you see Inbox going in the future? Mm. Mm. I, I really like that question. Um, well, there's, a, I'll answer this in two ways. Uh, one is on the kind of uh, the software side. Uh, as I said, our development processes uh, are very iterative. Um, so what you see in the Inbox offering platform today is going to be updated. Uh, everything from the look and feel to the user experience to some of the kind of gadgets that you can use to craft your inbox. Um, something that we are adding into all inboxes in the very near future is an option for how to score uh, if you want to use kind of a base percentage score or percentiles. Uh, we're adding things like open text responses. Uh, we're adding things like different ways to use the time remaining that you see at the top of the screen as a clock, as, as a modifiable piece to kind of accelerate time and so on. So uh, on one side, we're going to see a lot of uh, different uses for Capsum Inbox in the future, um, just based on the affordances that the software provide. Um, but what I'm actually more interested in is kind of the future of how uh, people gravitate towards this tool. And one of the things that we're already seeing is we have a certification course that people can go through uh, to become further trained in using Capsum Inbox. And uh, one of the common questions we receive from, uh, from uh, businesses like many of yours are, okay, can you help me write this? Uh, you know, I have some information that, that I have, but I want to work with somebody who's an expert. Right now, we work with you. Um, but that said, this uh, really kind of gives you the opportunity to make some money. Uh, I mean, this, this is almost kind of a, a developmental fee that you can bake in yourself as a consultant. If you learn uh, how to use the Capsum Inbox platform, you can use your talents to actually craft inboxes to build for different companies. So let's say you're a consultant and you want to create something to solve a training need. Uh, we see this frequently with instructional designers and learning experience designers uh, who are creating training content for others. Uh, you can use Capsum Inbox for that purpose. It's an absolutely free tool to use. So I suspect that we will see an influx of, of authors in a platform style, almost in the vein of, uh, of, of drivers uh, on Uber or Lyft. Um, and, and that is a little bit more abstract, but I can see that happening in the very near future. 
What do you see, Matt? This is a this is a really great question. I want to hear your response. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I, I like the, your approach that you know the kind of more technical things that we're going to be looking at, as well as you know, kind of working with a network of all sorts of different professionals. I think those are both two key points. If I were just to add to that, I would say that in terms of use cases, going back to the the main focus of today's webinar, where do I see it going in the future? I think the sky's the limit, honestly. I think that you know, just based on mine and Brendan's experience over the last few months alone, we've been presented with a variety of different you know uses for this platform that we had never thought of originally when we were originally developing it. Honestly, I mean things like you know we we had some things in mind like the pre and post test like we had talked about, but say you know use cases like as a tutorial or as a live case study or as just a, you know an assessment or an annual evaluation or things like testing the retention rate of employees for instance like that or you know being able to use an inbox as an extension or an add-on to an existing you know training program or HR course that you have. I mean all of these were things that you know we may have had a, an idea of at the time but I mean we're still learning of new ways every single day how this develops so it's always an exciting and refreshing experience to see where this platform is going to move into the future. So I think I'll yeah, just leave it with that. Yeah that's a really great point. You, you hit on a concept of you know uh, typically hiring people into um, you know, large cohorts. So whether this is a customer service role or uh, even a kind of a junior leadership development program, anything where you're hiring a big group of people, there is that issue that is very prevalent of turnover and people not being the right fit for the job. Um, so this is a great way to identify, you know, is this person right? Uh, and can they, can they hack it in this role? Um, it, will reduce that turnover rate that you're seeing uh, in these large organizations. So there are certain roles that I think will really gravitate towards this as well. That's a great point, Matt. Absolutely. And with that, I think we've responded to all the questions we've gotten so far. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and close out today's webinar. Again, Brendan and I would like to thank you all for participating. Uh, we hope that this has been beneficial. We look forward to continuing the conversation with some of you, and we hope you all have a great day. Yeah, thank you so much for the time. Uh, looking forward to talking to you all individually. Take care. Take care.